friends, welcome again to the Glitter Happy Boutique. My previous video I talked about creating these witches runes from resin and I had a few things I wanted to finish up with uh, on these second batch that I did. I told you the first batch was cannot be recovered so I'm not going to touch those again but I did want to show you what I talked about in that other video about when you put the ink on and you want to rub it off so I added a little bit more ink to the eye uh, this one needed a little more ink before I top these uh, with resin I wanted to get that ink uh, in some of the places that it uh, had chipped away so I did use paint here I use just this um, apple barrel this is like 99 cents or something it's so inexpensive I think this is from Joann's um, it's just a glossy acrylic paint in black so I used a Dollar Tree brush. That's right, Dollar Tree, my friends. I really recommend it. Always go into Dollar Tree and see what they have. You never know. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rub this off. And yes, there's some paper towel getting stuck in there. It might be easier to see on this one. Let me add a little light here. You see the the ink is, or sorry, the paint is outside of the um, engraving, but I'm going to rub it off here. And like I said, you have to have a little bit of um, roughness to get the ink off. Okay, and that's, and I'll clean that up in just a sec. So this one actually, I don't need to rub off because I was able to use a toothpick and I went in there with the ink, or sorry, I keep saying ink, but it's paint. So I went in there with this um, toothpick because I also could have used this tool, again, also found at the Dollar Tree. Um, this is for uh, using on clay, but, and it's very, very sharp. So this would not, actually deposit ink so or paint so that would not be what you want to use but I found that a good old-fashioned toothpick was what I used here and it worked really well so sometimes you don't need the fanciest items to get what you need done so I will say that I can't get this out without a tool there's a little paper left over in there I'm just gonna flake that off Okay, so, um, and then here on this one, there's a little bit of ink, or <laughs> there's a little bit of paint coming on the sides here, and I just take this um, toothpick again, and I'm just scraping it off. It's too close to the groove here, or the etching, to wipe any further and yes I could use a q-tip but this is just easier I found just to use a toothpick to get in there and kind of scratch away any leftover paint okay so that's that one and I'm done so next I'm going to take all of these ruins and I'm going to use UV resin to create a, a dome effect uh, and harden it and also uh, set the paint inside there from being damaged. Um, if you were to you know, drop these in the water or pick at them, this, this paint will eventually, you can pull it out eventually, so you need to put something on top, uh, some sort of a protectant to keep the paint from being damaged. So that is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the resin. So I'm going to be using this UV resin craft from Blue Moon Studios, which you can get at Michael's. And I have toothpicks here in case I need to pop bubbles or I can use my heat gun also. And okay, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna start with one and then I will work through all of them at a fast pace.
I'm not sure if you can hear my husband in the background watching football and cursing. So if you do, my apologies. Okay, that went on a little thicker than I expected. Kind of popped out there. Okay, I'm just gonna do one. Let's see how it looks. I am wearing gloves and I have my, I have ventilation in this room. I have a fan going. I also have a mask uh, that I'm not wearing at the moment, but should be. All right, let's just do this one. So it looks really glossy and shiny. Gotta love that. Just do one here. This will take about two minutes under the UV lamp. This is also Blue Moon Studios, this uh, little guy here. You can also get a handheld one. It's like a little flashlight. Um, so sometimes if it's warm out in the evening, I will go outside and do some resin work and I have the little flashlight that I can just, wherever I'm, I am at located, if I'm not near uh, connection for this, which is USB, I can just use my flashlight. So that's really convenient. When I did sand these down a little bit, I just used this very inexpensive uh, nail file but wide enough that I could put the ru the ruins right on it. And here I just, what I did here, is I just did a little quick rubbing against it. <laughs> oh, uh oh, <laughs> my husband's cursing. Um, so this one here, <laughs> go 49ers, I don't know. So this has some sharp edges on it, so you wanna just sand it down just a little bit and make sure you're wearing gloves, make sure you're wearing a mask because you do not want to have the resin uh, dust. You don't want to inhale that. Okay, so this finished, um, I do see bubbles in there, so I'll have to figure out if I need to actually use my heat gun. Yep, I probably should have used my heat gun, but this is, this is how we learn, right? This is the only way to learn is to just do it and figure things out. So I'll wait for this one to finish and then I'll just show you how it's hardened. And then the next one I'm gonna use the heat gun and see if we lose the bubbles. I also noticed here that, I can't see it, but if I put these on their side, the actual height and the volume used is different. So one is thinner than the other. So that's another whoopsie on my part. I overfilled some of the parts of the mold and others I did not. So it's now it's different lengths or different uh, heights. If you're looking at it from my view. Okay, so that's done. Oh, well, that is pretty. That is sure pretty. So it, it's, um, it's got a little bit of a dome to it, and it is it is hard. It's it's nice and hard. It's still a little warm. What you can do as well is um, if you are doing a lot of the UV resin, I like to do it like earlier in the day, and then when the sun is like at its peak, I'll take my um, my things out to the backyard and I'll let them sit in the sun just just because. So. UV resin inside is, you know, where you're going to work with it. But once you're done, and if you're, it's still feeling a little tacky, just, you know, you can put it outside and it, it, the sunlight will also cure it. Okay, so that one's done. Let's do one more and let's see if we can't get rid of the bubbles, which if you see they're in the little swirls there. Do the 
this one here. Next. I'm gonna use this heat gun, Chandler Tools makes it, and of course I chose the pink one. There's a pink and blue color. I had a heck of a time trying to find a heat gun the other day. <clears throat> I went to various different stores. I went to hardware stores and you know, the, the heat guns, when I ask for a heat gun, they get me a soldering iron and I'm like, nope, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I guess I could, worst case scenario, maybe use a blow dryer, but I, I wanted something very small like this guy here. So, okay, so again, I am adding the UV resin to my ruin. message comes in. Hmm. Oh boy. For my brothers. It could be not appropriate. <laughs> All right. I am going to let that sit there for a second. So definitely got some two really big bubbles there. Let's see if we can get rid of them. This is the first time I'm using this too, by the way. Wish me luck. So there's two settings, low and high. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with low. Oh, dang, they're gone. <laughs> Just like that, they're gone. Um, there's a little one in there still. I don't want to get too close. Oh, there it goes. Oh, nice. Okay. That, that's it. It blew them away, literally. So now, see, I didn't want to get too close because there is heat blowing on it, and I didn't want to lose that dome um, finish that we're trying to gain here. In any case, now I'm going to put the UV resin. Let's see if we get better results with the bubbles. And this little trivet, by the way, I've been looking for one of these. I watch a lot of YouTube videos for resin. I was looking for tips. And um, I, I've seen these, they're trivets. Uh, they're actually for hot, you know, uh, kitchenware and anything that's dripping. I didn't find anything specific to, for people that are making resin uh, crafts. So I just went ahead and got this a pack of these from Amazon. Um, they came like within 12 hours, which is really awesome. And uh, yeah, it's great because it keeps your crafts from moving around. And uh, if you do spill any of the resin, this is silicone. So you can pop out the resin once it, it's cured. So if it's UV resin, you need to use the lamp to uh, harden any liquid that's left over. If it's epoxy, you just gotta let it sit. Over time, it'll harden, and then you can pop it out too. Okay, so that's that's it. Now I have gloves on, so I can't really feel if it's tacky, but it looks pretty good. So I, I think that's really beautiful. I love glossy, glittery things. I don't know about you, but, and that this is multicolored and it's kind of a, you know, like a, a witchy thing, I think is pretty freaking awesome, especially for Halloween that's coming up soon. Okay, so let's compare it. I don't know if you can tell much of a difference here. So this one here has the bubbles. I did not use a heat gun. I'm really trying to get in there, sorry. It looks so glossy. Let me get the right angle. So this one here has bubbles in the little swirls. This one has um, a little bit of bubbles, but there were some really big ones in there. So probably if I try this again, I can do um, more of the heat gun farther away so that I don't lose the I don't spread the resin over because I do want that doming effect. So yeah, it's just practice, 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 practice.
All right, so I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these and then I will show you the results. I'm gonna just go in here and try to actually burst the little bubbles in there because the heat gun is not getting to these ones down here. I'm gonna literally push this this guy over the edge. Because I can't pop him. Little bastard, get out of here. Pop you or I push you away. Goodness. All right, I just got to kick you off. There you go. All right. I kind of broke the yolk in a way, and so now it's dripping, but I had like surface tension that prevented it from overflowing completely, but it's there. That's okay. All right. And so the liquid I have in there will just harden as well, and I can pop it out since this is, like I said before, silicone. done. Tap, tap, tap. So I think what was happening too, I was noticing that the heat from the heat gun was actually warming up the acrylic paint underneath. So that was an interesting observation. So it's a uh, 
I don't know. I don't think it looks very good. It's too, too messy. That eyeball is way too messy. But it should be clean and crisp and so well, this one is not a good one. But again, as long as we're learning, that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. And these guys here will should just pop out. Yeah. And I like to keep the leftover resin. I have a, just like a, a little baggie full of little pieces because I never know what I'm going to use it for. But I don't want to waste the product. So that's just what I do. Because you never know. You can use it in something in the future. Actually, that's pretty cool looking. That's like a little honeycomb piece. I just pop right out. <laughs> I guess you, this could be used as a mold if you need it to be. All right, I'm just gonna continue. I'm probably not going to work on the ones that have fresh paint, or fresh, yeah, fresh paint. So um, I'm going to now dome a couple, at, um, actually I'll do a few at once, and then I'm gonna put the UV light on them so we can get through this a little faster. By the way, this UV resin, it's it's like $10 at Michael's, um, which is you know expensive for only two fluid ounces, but I will say that recently they, they had a sale, buy one, get one 50% off. So I could have bought, well, anyways, look for sales, right? Because this stuff is not cheap. That's why I use epoxy for larger projects and these little ones I can get away with using the UV resin. I love UV resin because it just hardens so quickly, like two minutes you can see the results of your work. Whereas the epoxy, you're waiting, you know, 24, 48, 72 hours. And that's not fun to wait for, to see how things are going, especially if you're doing layers, like I'm trying to do with some of the work I'm doing. Uh, I'm layering epoxy, so I have to wait. I have to wait a few days before I can do the next layer, and then depending on how many layers, it could be a while. And you just hope that you don't mess up one of those layers towards the end. So look for sales. I guess that's the that is the moral of this story. Okay, that one's got a huge bubble in it. So that should be fun. Actually, let me see if I can just I popped it. Awesome. That went really easily there's a, another one in there. That is a persistent little guy. Okay, got it. All right. And I wonder also for this one that I'm doing right now, it's, it lacks the volume that the others have. So I didn't put enough of the epoxy when I filled the mold for this particular piece. And I wonder if you can kind of even it out like if you, by putting more resin, maybe even a, a second layer on top to kind of get it to the same volume as the others. That's probably something we could do. Overall, there's just a few bubbles. Another thing I like about the UV resin is that because it comes right out of a little bottle and you don't have to mix it because it, it doesn't react like you have to do with epoxy. You have to put the two parts together. Um, with the UV resin, it comes out smooth um, it doesn't have a lot of bubbles, but if you use epoxy, it says you're putting two chemicals together and you're vigorously mixing it, and maybe you shouldn't vigorously mix it because that also introduces bubbles, but, you know, overall you're going to have less trouble with UV resin when it comes to bubbles. So I just have a few here that I'm trying to pop, or I can't pop them, I can kick them out, 
and as a last resort I can also try my heat gun just to see if I can't get those few little guys there. There's a little bubble in there, that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. We were still learning. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cure these all at the same time. and glossy and hard. I would I would still put these in the sun personally. Oh see this is a little wet and tacky here. So actually you know what? To be safe I'm gonna use one more time. And I will put these in the sun <clears throat> if there's sun left today. If not I'll wait till tomorrow and then I'll put them out and get them extra cured. You have to be careful if you get any of the resin on your fingers. If you get it onto a cured piece, then uh, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll be a little wet from what you have on your fingers. But if it then gets exposed to UV light, like let's say I take it outside or I open the window, then that might harden like that, and it looks like it could be like a fingerprint or a print from your glove so got to make sure to be mindful of that this one is harder now okay great and there are some pieces stuck here that um, came over the basically over the, the dome it's filled out on the side there um, I'm probably going to use my exacto knife to kind of clean that up in a very safe way. <laughs> like I had to be really careful to not, well, cut myself. So that would be the next part of that is just using an exacto knife to clean that up. All right, let me do these next three. This one is 
is lower. This, this is one of the ones with less volume than this one. This one's thicker. This one's not as thick. So that was a problem. So you could use epoxy resin to, you know, to dome these, but imagine like these having to sit for 24, 48, or 72 hours. They can't move. They can't get bumped. If any dust falls on them, they're going to be inside it permanently. So you kind of have to use, for things like this, UV resin. two big bubbles there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't see it. Trust me, it's there. Oops, I did it. Oh, <laughs> oh you know what? I could kind of pop it with the tip here. Ooh, all right, that worked pretty good. Don't know why. Let's see if we get another bubble, and then if we do, we can see if we can pop it with the tip. Yeah, looks like we can. Okay, and I got some paint on the side here, but I can scratch that off. But if the resin covers it and then hardens, it's there. There's nothing you can do about it. All right. Let's see. I see a lot of little bubbles in here. I almost want to use something super sharp like this, like this thing. Would that look? Wow. Even this super sharp, thin needle won't pop the bubbles. try the second setting on this Chandler heat gun um, just because I haven't done that yet and I'm just curious to see if these tiny bubbles are affected by a higher setting but I'll have to keep the gun farther away I think from the heat gun for this sucker here, so I'm going to push it off. I'm way with you. Okay, let's cure it. I'm going to do this twice. A little smoke there. I'm wondering if it's the UV resin that's burning, is it the paint or is it the epoxy? Oh, sorry, the, the silicone mat. In any case, definitely got to be careful with that heat gun.
It might be better for larger projects than these small little ones. But I will definitely be trying it out with my other videos, so I'll let you know how that goes. seemed like the second UV light treatment was shortened, so I'm just running it a third time to be safe. The extension cord isn't long enough, that's why it keeps pulling. I'm trying to pull this thing right off the desk. So these ruins you can, I you know, I think they're like, they're for um, kind of telling your future. That's what they could be used for, but I think besides that usage, you could um, make keychains out of these, you could make earrings out of them. I mean, I think there's a lot of fun stuff you could do with it. little pieces I don't want to pull it off I'll let it hard and then I'll I'll cut it off <clears throat> all right so these ones came out with with bubbles a little bubbles sorry so you see this little this little happy face guy has a lot of little bubbles in it so that's not what we want but it's glossy as hell which is Gorgeous. Love that. Love that part. Let me put it on its side. You can see that doming effect there. Okay. I'm going to do these three next. try to do this in, in one without lifting the tip from the resin if I can the whole way around and see if that method helps to reduce the number of bubbles. So when I had to come back in, I did introduce a bubble there. So, yep, if you can avoid it, you can just keep the tip down in one shot, uh, you're going to have better results. I'm going to try that again. I am running low in this bottle, so I might have to switch to a new bottle. So, yeah, there's a couple little bubbles and they're not bad.
Okay, so that came out pretty good. So that might, we might be onto something there, guys. We don't lift the tip as we deposit the UV resin. There's less chances we're introducing air bubbles. This little one here is not going to play nice. Yep. Kick him out. Oh. <laughs> That big one became a bunch of little ones. All right, there you go. And there's one in here. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get to it. All right, cool. So let's, let's do two rounds curing. These are looking really pretty. They're not perfect. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of smoke again. Maybe these, I, I hate to think it's the trivets because they're supposed to withstand the heat, but um, I'm not sure why there's A little bit of smoke coming off here. Because I've done UV resin obviously before, but I haven't done it on this, this mat. So I don't know if, if the mat is, is reacting to the UV light. perhaps. Okay, let's see how these came out. They got the little pieces there. It's okay. So these came out very glossy um, and they have very little bubbles. There was, a, you know, one or two that I did introduce. Couldn't help it, but I really think when you put the tip of the, the tip here of the UV resin into the liquid and you keep it in, in contact with the liquid as it comes out, you don't introduce air and bubbles. So these are uh, good, but I, like I said, I'm going to take all of these outside and let them sit in the sun to really cure. And then I'll go back in and I'll trim the little pieces that are stuck that came off of this mat. Okay, here's our last two. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know this isn't totally super interesting, but I have found that when I watch these crafty videos, especially when they have like nice relaxing music I, I it just relaxes me as well you know like this crafty stuff is definitely a, a form of therapy 
so I am feeling relaxed, which should be the case when you are doing creative things that you enjoy. It should not be a chore. Okay, so again, keeping that tip in there, I think it looks pretty good. This one has some bubbles forming. I'm just about out of this. I think the heat gun's a little bit too aggressive for something this small. So I would save that for a different, uh, not, not something like dome like this. It might be something more flat will be better. But I may not know the technique either, so I might it might be me. So these little bubbles aren't really bursting. I don't know, maybe I need a fresh toothpick. Mm, nope. They are not going anywhere. Okay, that's fine. Leave them in there. These are only my second batch of ruins ever made, so I'm okay that they're not perfect. I know we'll get there. There's just a little bit of smoke. I'm batting it away. thinking of getting a bigger UV light than this one. Like the ones that, I, I don't know if the same ones that you use when you go get your nails done, you get gel nails and they use those, those UV lights that you stick your hands in. I don't know if that's the same as what we use here, it might be. Um, so I kind of was thinking of killing two birds with one stone by putting on my Amazon wish list the, the um, gel kit for my nails that comes with a bigger UV light so I can get my nails done at home and I can use the UV light for my crafts. So assuming they're the same mechanism, then <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do at least. I mean, you know, we do crafts because it's fun and pretty and decorative and imagine you do that with your nails too. <laughs> you can just like put a lot of glitter on your nails and make it super shiny. Okay, I think that's, I did more than two, so I think this is okay. I want to show it, show it to you before I take it outside. Okay, so... Yeah, there's one big bubble at the top of the other end here, the top of this one. I couldn't push it off. I didn't want it at least. Um, and there's, oops, there's from there. So, not too bad, but they're better. Let's go to the, the first ones we had. Um, we're over, like here. I mean, this one was super... This one has a lot of little bubbles in it. A little smiley dude. Um, and this one only has one. So we got better there right off the bat. We learned something. All right, 
I'm gonna go cure these further in the sun, trim off the excess pieces, and then I will show you the end result. Actually, before I take these outside to do a final cure, I just wanted to show you them together, all of them. I mean, they look, they look wet right now, right? But they're not. They're soft for sure. You know, I would not want to play with them too much. Um, so, but I love that. I love that gloss. Love it. So, I'm gonna take this outside. See you in a little bit. Okay, so it's the next day, and I had left these out to cure in the sun, and I had a few of these that had little pieces of the, the pattern from the mat connected uh, when I did the doming. Some spilled over and went into the mat, and when uh, I pulled it out, it had it attached, and I dried it like that. Um, so what I did is I finished curing these in the sun, and I came back in to break off those extra pieces, but I realized that once these cooled, it was very hard to take those pieces off. So I took the few out to the sun again to let them kind of soften up in the, in the sun. And then I was able to, it became more pliable. So I used this exacto knife to kind of snap it off. So this is now the finished product. This again, this is batch number two and it's it's looking pretty good but you know to be honest the from a quality perspective i would not put these in my etsy store they're not good enough but you know they're we're progressing we're getting better at it so let me show you the final product ha, sorry about that <laughs> so very glossy but it does have some bubbles in there and some of the pieces because they had chunks hanging off of them when we did the doming um, it's not a very smooth backside here so I would not these are not good enough to be sold but like I said it's all a learning process so that doesn't look too bad but when you look on the other side there were some pieces there kind of stuck I couldn't cut cut it off too much or I would have I would damage it so the thing we did learn though <clears throat> we tried three different heating methods to or sorry three different methods to get rid of the bubbles first we tried to just use toothpicks uh, the other thing we tried to do was to use a heat gun and then the third thing we did is we used the applicator the applicator that's on the cap of the UV resin to keep in contact as we're pouring the resin out and both well, actually all three worked in a certain way um, in some cases we were able to pop the bubbles with the toothpick um, with the heat gun some of the bubbles did disappear but some didn't uh, and then when we use the applicator I think by keeping it in contact with the resin as we poured it that gave us the best result. So I think it's a combination of the three. In the future, what I'll do is I will, number one, keep the uh, keep the applicator in contact with the resin, try not to do multiple squeezes so I don't introduce air in, into the resin making bubbles. If there are some, I will first try to use the toothpick and then I can try the heat gun. And if all else fails, I can just push the bubbles off to the side but then that gives us the issue where we have uh, the resin running over the side and, and really don't want to do that if we can help it because then we, we don't have very good quality here on the side. So that's it. That's my video. My next video, I'm going to actually start from scratch. Well, not total scratch because I have these already made. This is going to be my third batch. And we're going to see how these turn out if I've learned enough to make a better quality. <laughs> the goal is to get these to the quality that they can go in an Etsy store, but I'm not quite there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.